Uh, I thought before I started my presentation, I'd just give you a quick minute and just, or take a quick minute and describe exactly what my company does. You know, basically, we try to provide value added research to our readers by taking a bottoms up approach in our, our, in our market analysis. So basically, we look at the economy and we look at key metal and aerospace markets by essentially each quarter reaching out to a number of companies within the marketplace asking them questions in terms of what they're seeing, looking at a few of the key data points that are in the marketplace. Uh, and then we try to run some analytics on those numbers and try to gauge the underlying health of the, of the industries, you know, like titanium, as well as kind of comment on or show what the current momentum looks like out there. So what we are trying to do is kind of provide a niche service because it seems like uh, data points change very quickly, so each quarter we, we provide some type of update. Um, and before I forget, I put a couple of uh, sample reports out there if you guys are interested. There's some in that first chair and, and some back there. kind of gives you an idea of the reports that we write. So with that, with that intro being said, um, you know, if you take a look at, at my, uh, my title, it's, we think there are some reasons to be optimistic about the markets as we head into 2017. It's never as good as it seems. Uh, two years ago, the last time I presented, I came in here and I boasted how Cleveland was on the upside because Johnny Menzel was gonna take the Browns to the Super Bowl last year. That didn't happen. This year, the Browns look like they're gonna go 0-16. So it's never a Super Bowl team and it's never, uh, it's never an, a team that can't win. And it feels like when you look and talk to some of the titanium people out there, uh, they may be leaning a little bit too close to the negative side. So I wanted to show some charts that I've been tracking for a while. Um, so basically we think the specialty, materi specialty materials channel has entered a period of accelerated growth. You know, 2016 does look like it was going to become uh, a transition year for the marketplace. And we actually think that the visibility has actually improved as we look out six to 12 months. And there's really six factors that we've been focused on. Uh, number one, you've got volume acceleration in some of these longer lead time product categories like titanium. So it feels like demand is approaching those levels that we saw back in 2011. Uh, second, the commercial aerospace channel has actually transi transitioned into a positive catalyst and a demand pool for the industry. So um, if, if you speak to companies like Alcoa or you listen to their presentations on day one, I think they'll tell you that it feels like the underlying momentum from some of these commercial aircraft programs is starting to kick in. Uh, number three, we are starting to see better lead times for some of the products out there. Um, it feels like the market or the operating rates are going to start moving higher as we head into next year. Four, uh, inventories finally look like they're, they're balanced out there. Uh, five, you know, any changes that we see to the positive on the industrial markets could really strengthen or tighten the supply markets out there. You know, right now, it feels like this, this industry is being supported by the growth in aerospace. And six, we think industry consolidation is, is very likely to take place over the next 12 months. And you know, our view is still that backward integration is going to be key in those marketplaces. You know, we've already started to see capital flowing into the industry when Alaris, uh, an aluminum provider, was acquired a couple of weeks ago. We think that continues going forward. So with that being said, I wanted to show you the momentum chart that we, that we put in our reports. And, and basically, we have seen pretty good momentum in volume growth over the past two years for the four product categories that are, are, are tracked within this market study. You know, our data collection is really suggesting that you know, the market has started to improve in early 2016, and each month we've seen better activity um, uh, throughout the channel. The first thing I'd highlight is, you know, the average comp for the industry looks like it's plus four, three to four percent. You know, that's up probably two, three points from where we saw the market ending in 2015. But more importantly for this room, the, the quote unquote strength continues to be generated by the titanium channel. And when you look at, I guess you can see the, the blue bars, this is the titanium growth quarter, year over year on a quarterly basis. And you can see that activity has really started to pick up for the longer lead time markets. That one. 
this is a, an important chart, I guess, because we've actually tracked the titanium markets for a number of years. And I think it helps put pers into perspective where the current momentum is versus some of the past cycles. And you can see that the volume growth um, here for the third quarter is now at the strongest levels that we've seen since 2011. And we think the momentum improves. One of the questions that we ask within our survey is what are your expectations for 2017? And right now the consensus outlook is, is plus five, 6%. So there is no indication that the market is going to slow from here. It's, it's actually looking like you've got some tailwind behind it. Um, when you look at the data even further, it becomes interesting because a lot of the companies that we speak to that would be considered levered to aerospace, um, they're talking about a growth in that 15 to 6 or 15, 16, 17 percent range. So we think that if you're on the right program, some of these next generation aircraft, that you're going to start seeing the, the volume pull much earlier. So, so I, don't, I don't want to spend a lot of time here. This is the nickel-based alloy demand trend over long term. And you know, I, I just wanted to show this because it's about two to three points worse than titanium, uh, but it is also improving as well. I think the, the reason we haven't seen the same type of growth in some of the other alloy markets is because there's been no positive driver in terms of non-aerospace demand. Nickel-based alloys tend to be a little more levered to energy and power gen and that still still is lagging but 2017 expectations for the nickel based alloy markets uh, are, are pretty strong as well the, the consensus outlook is probably plus four to five percent so even in some of the quote unquote weaker markets within special materials there is still a building level of confidence there so what i do is i track 13 individual end markets um, we tried to show where the strength or weakness in orders could be coming from, from a distribution and a fabrication perspective. Um, so you can see here that the industrial markets have turned back into contraction. It looked like you saw uh, some positive momentum in the first half of the year, but as we got into the summer months, some businesses had stalled, some orders had stalled. You know, the most common theme has been the uncertainty around the election, you've got commodity prices were falling last year. So uh, this market is still a drag on overall demand. Um, but in a second, I'll show why we think it, it could be a little, a little bit uh, better going forward. But as you can see, some of the markets that have really been struggling, I think you'll see here oil and gas is still comping very negative. Um, desalination has been weak, CPI has been weak. Really the only non-aerospace market that's working today from our research has, has been medical. Uh, let's see here. So uh, on the positive side, the aerospace data points continue to get positive. Uh, and here's the breakdown of the aerospace demand drivers that we track within our survey. And you know they're all showing positive growth dynamics, which is the first time we've seen in quite a while. Uh, and it looks like in total, aerospace demand on a volume basis is running around the plus four to five percent range. Uh, that's for the third quarter. Uh, but really, if you look at the, the data, its volumes have been driven by the strength that we continue to see in the airframe and jet engine market. And we're still seeing strength even with what looks like the third quarter has, well, the third quarter has seen a little bit of an inventory build here, but uh, you know, underlying momentum has been good. So not a whole lot to say about this chart um, here, but it's actually the, the data point that I track the closest. And what this is, is the calculation to show inventory intention uh, throughout the uh, service center market for both titanium and nickel-based alloys. And you can see here, really when you look at the line and the trend, distributors have been looking to build inventories basically over the past two quarters, and for titanium it's been three quarters. So what we think this indicates is the level of confidence in forward-looking demand or kind of expectations on price. So this has been, been the, historically this is a positive leading indicator for, for mill activity. So this is something that we've been watching pretty closely. And, and this has been going on even with some of the airframe guys running a little long on inventory where you see some work down at Airbus 
uh, in particular uh, in this quarter. So what we also try to do is estimate the lead times by product category. And you know what clearly sticks out here is the expansion that we continue to see in titanium mill lead times. You know, right now we're at about 20 weeks on average. You know, that's up from basically 14 weeks in early 2015, <clears throat> uh, which we think was essentially the market trough. Um, what's also interesting here is if you look at this chart right here, this is the percentage of companies that are having problems procuring certain types of titanium. So even when you look at some of the niche products within the titanium market, there are certain areas where there's shortages. Um, so, you know, that's, that would suggest that, especially on the titanium sheet side, the market is starting to get a bit tight. Um, so uh, I think ultimately you could say that we're in good territory right now. Things are not robust yet, but, but the momentum has been positive. I think once you see lead times in that kind of 35 to 40 week range, that's when we'd feel much more optimistic about the marketplace. Uh, what we try to do in our surveys is, I guess you could say, ask five or six questions that are hot button issues or you know, questions that have been asked within the industry and try to get some feedback from, from the industry contacts in terms of how they feel about things. And I think there's, within this chart, three things to highlight. One, the specialty materials supply base still um, expects a lot of M&A activity to happen over the next year or so hard time with this for some reason. Uh, second, you know, over 90% of the companies we speak with still have a lot of confidence in the current build rates that are being put forth by Boeing and Airbus. Uh, and the third is, you know, most would think that a Republican presidential candidate is probably better for the industry. Um, but I think in the end, what some of the survey questions are saying is, you know, after two years of inactivity or, or kind of just pessimistic sentiment, you know, things have started to turn around. So with that being said, I, I, I thought I would kind of present some of my bigger picture assumptions in terms of how I get to my industry model and where we see demand going. Um, and, and Richard does a much better job than this than I do, but, you know, basically the long-term forecast for titanium is going to be driven by the build rates on commercial aerospace. You know, right now you are talking about 45% of mill demand is really going to be generated by buying within Boeing and, and Airbus as, long, as well as the jet engine producers. So, um, you know, we're thinking that build rates have potentially 30% upside from here until 2020. Um, and you know, we're also still highlighting the, uh, you know, the secular story that's going on here. You're seeing more content used on these next generation aircraft. And that was really discussed in that, that day one panel. But that being said, the question is, when build rates are moving higher, why wasn't titanium demand stronger for the last few years? And what I tried to show is this chart here. And, and basically, this is what we think has been the problem within the titanium market for a number of years. And you know, other markets for that matter, whether it be forging or fasteners. And what we try to do is model the estimated amount of titanium inventory that was held within the entire aerospace channel. And for those of us that can remember, Boeing's 787 program was delayed a number of years. However, there was still material shipped into that channel, um, honoring take or pay agreements, suppliers preparing for an increased level of demand. And what we think happened is while these delays were going on, there was essentially one year of inventory built within the channel. And we've essentially been looking at that material being worked down uh, for the last three, four years. So while production rates are going higher, consumption was moving up, we did not see that a distributor or mill level because of the excess material clogged within the system. So what we think the market, where we think the market is right now is this green line. So it feels like as we get closer to 2017, the titanium industry will be closer to a balanced dynamic out there. So in terms of the underlying macro conditions, one of the things we do is ask within all our metals surveys, 
you know, what customers are doing within a variety of different end markets. And through our survey work within steel, stainless steel, a lot of the other commodities, you know, we have visibility in essentially 25 different end markets. And this is where we think real macro demand is in North America. So although there isn't much growth right now, the underlying growth for the manufacturing and industrial sectors seems to be picking up. And what has been interesting is, and if you look at the page, you can see this a little bit better. Among the 25 end markets, this is the quarter to quarter change in the comps. And you can see is we are finally seeing a light at the end of the tunnel for a lot of these markets that have been huge negatives for the industry really since 2014. So oil and gas, um, power generation, uh, nuclear, there, it feels like there's a light at the end of the tunnel for some of these dirtier markets out there. So that is where the optimism is coming for us as we go into 2017 as well. You've got this aerospace story going on, but you've also no longer have negative momentum in some of the end markets here. This is kind of, this is my demand forecast for some of the industrial markets. And you can see, I'm not planning much growth in terms of the volumes, but I think there could be an opportunity if we continue to see this line develop. So here is uh, my industry model and how we see demand taking place over the next three to four years. Um, you know, first, I just highlight the gray bar is aerospace, right? So as production rates were building, as everybody saw the numbers out there from Boeing and Airbus, we did not see that develop into real volumes for the industry. So now as the market becomes balanced and build rates continue to move higher, that's when we should see the damn consumption pull from aerospace. So basically our, our mill demand forecast right now for the Western world is about 185 million pounds for 2016. So we're looking at about 3% growth this year on average for the channel. But what's more importantly is we, we're going what we think is into a period of accelerated growth. And you can see you know, 6 to 7% growth uh, as we get into 2017 and then another period of acceleration as we get into 2018. And, and here you can see this is kind of where we think the incremental drivers are coming from, but 8 million pounds is going to come from aerospace while you get really muted growth in some of these other end markets. So by 2020, we think the industry will establish a new peak around that 250 million pound level. So I don't talk a whole lot about pricing, but I thought what might be interesting is to kind of show where we think the operating rates are for the industry. And the last panel talked about it. There's been a lot of investment in supply, as we all know about. So uh, we think right now, on average, the industry is probably at about 45, 50% operating rates of capacity utilization. But what's interesting here is if these demand numbers continue to develop, we should see operating rates start moving higher. And we've also actually adjusted for Allegheny Technologies' uh, decision to shut down their sponge plant um, in Utah. So the operating rate outlook feels like it's bottomed and it would become even higher if we did see some capacity taken out of the marketplace. And what I try to do is I look at the rate of change in demand versus the rate of change in supply. And historically, I've kind of put that against scrap prices or any type of raw material price. And I think what's more important here is it looks like we're gonna enter a net deficit period in 2017 and 2018. So historically, that's an inflationary environment. Um, uh, and here's their nickel based alloy chart. And I know you guys care less on this side, but the same kind of thought process behind here is we're finally going to see aerospace, which is the gray line, become a positive driver for the markets out there.